Hi, Jesse here with eTrailer. Today we'll be taking a look at and I'll show you how to install the Timken replacement trailer bearing L44649. These will be the outer bearings of the hubs of our 2022 Forest River Geo Pro travel trailer. If you're just trying to replace some worn out bearings or maybe you know you're long overdue and you're looking to get a slight upgrade, you really can't go wrong with Timken's trailer bearings. Also, if you're replacing one of the bearings, then you'll most likely be replacing both along with the races and the seal. We'll start with the inner bearings. These are our larger bearings. The ones that we're looking at in particular are L68149 bearings. That's an industry standard number. So if you're wondering what size bearing you need, you can just pull your hub off, look on the back of your bearings, and that number will be printed there or you could take a micrometer and measure it, but it's a lot easier just to look at the number. So these Timken bearings, they're made of their own special alloy that Timken has, and they're uh, said to cut down on noise and vibration. They're super high quality. So really, a roller bearing, it's just gonna be two cylinders with some roller bearings in between them, and you would pack that full of grease, and then the race is what keeps the bearing protected and tight. As you can see, they fit almost perfectly together. So that's gonna hold your bearing in place and allow you to have a nice smooth ride. The outer bearing is made of that same alloy and you'd be able to identify the L44649 the same way as the inner bearing. However, it's a little bit easier. You would just have to pop this cap off, take your spindle nut and washer off and you should see that number printed right there. But once again, it's made of that same alloy, super high quality, and the race that it matches up with is a perfect fit. Anytime we're replacing bearings, it's definitely a good idea to replace the grease seal also, just because to remove the grease seal, you kind of have to damage it by prying up on it. So this Timken one's a super high quality. It's got this kind of rubberized paint on the outside that's gonna help it stay uh, seated in the hub assembly and keep it from spinning. And it's just got a super tight seal so you don't have to worry about grease getting out from the back of your hub assembly. All in all, if you're looking to replace some worn out bearings or just looking to get an upgrade, you can't go wrong with Timken. They're made of super high quality metals and they're gonna last you a really long time. If you've installed these bearings before or similar bearings and just have some tips or tricks to share with us, feel free to share those. If you want to see how we got these installed on our trailer today, then follow along and I'll show you how we did it. First, we'll start by removing the wheel. Just make sure you have the axle supported by a jack stand and the tire off the ground. Take a 19 millimeter socket. and set the wheel aside. Now we need to get the grease cap off. You can use a screwdriver and kind of dig in between the outer lip, but usually you just give it a couple taps on the side and it will kind of come off. Now behind all this grease, we have a retainer clip. Just get some of that grease out of your way so you can see it. Then with a small pry bar, we'll just dig in there and pop it off. Then we can remove our axle nut. It should just be hand tight. If it's not, you can grab a socket. It'll be an inch and a quarter. Get that off. With that nut removed, our drum assembly should kind of pop off. You may have to wiggle it back and forth. Just watch out because we still have a washer 
and a bearing here that will fall out on you. Let's get that assembly off and set it aside. Now we need to get our seal off. So one trick is to just slide your hub assembly back into your wheel. Get those studs lined up. Get it to drop into place and then I'm just gonna screw on two lug nuts on the other side. This is just gonna give us uh, more leverage when we're prying back on the seal. All right, now we can lay everything down like this, get a pry bar, dig into the lip of that seal, and just push down your pry bar. Probably have to work your way around. seal out and your bearing should come right behind. Now we'll just take a rag and get some of this grease cleaned up. That's just so we can see where we're working when we're getting these races out of here. You could also spray some brake clean down in there to get as much grease off as you can. Now we'll flip our assembly over. I recommend having a piece of wood under it just so you're not destroying the concrete. And take a brass punch we want the brass punch because it's soft enough that it won't scratch the inside of our hub assembly, but it will also push out our race. You'll just have to look in there, find the lip of your race, and just start driving it out. Give it a tap on one side, then go to the other side. I'll have to kind of tilt it just so I can get that race all the way out. There it is. Same process with the inner race. We'll just have to flip it around. And then you can kind of see the lip of it. Get your punch to grab onto that and start hammering. So now that we have everything apart, I'll just go over what our race is going to do. So basically, it's just gonna get centered in where we had it, the old one, but the purpose of it is to have a perfect cone shape for your bearing to rest in. And that's just gonna keep your bearings working as they should and for a long time. So before we get this installed, just wanna clean out Get a nice clean surface to mount this into. And then we'll set this down. Remember that you want the uh, thinner part facing up towards you. That way our bearing can sit in there. And then we'll take a piece of wood and just give that some taps to get it driven in there. And once we're flush, we still have a little bit to go. So we'll take our old race and that piece of wood and drive that in farther. Just be sure to double check, make sure you're still centered. And I drove it in a little too far, so I'll just pop that. Hold race out. And just make sure you're sitting flush with that lip in there. That's our goal. I've gotten it as far in as I could with the race. So what I'll do is take that brass punch and just start alternating side to side, trying to get it to go down as even as possible.
And once that's flush, we can flip it around and we'll get started on the inner bearing race. So the inner race is going to replace our old inner race, which these can get damaged if you ran out of grease with your bearings and they get real hot. You'll probably see some score marks on the inside and that's when you know you need to replace them. But essentially it's just gonna slide into our hub and basically lock our inner bearing into place once we put that seal on over it. So to get it installed, just make sure your hub is nice and clean. You don't have any burrs or anything in there. Then we can start uh, pressing it in. It's gonna go with the thin side facing you. Kind of get that as centered as you can. We'll actually take our old race, slip that over there, and our piece of wood. And we'll hit that with the hammer. Now something that you can use to drive it the rest of the way in is a socket. Mine is a 41 millimeter socket, but depending on the brand, they all have different thicknesses on the outside. Just find one that's gonna fit over the race and not uh, hit your hub. And we're just gonna hammer that until it uh, is seated up against that lip. You could also put your old race in between the socket and your new race just to protect it a little more. And feel under there with your finger and make sure that you're centered over that lip. Now we can pack our bearings. Uh, you could use a bearing packer, but if you don't have one, it's not super difficult. Just get quite a bit of grease and try to work that to your palm. And then I'll just push it into the bearing. We'll just start at one spot. You wanna push it up. And what we want is to see it coming up through our rollers there. So once you see it start to come through, you can rotate the bearing and we'll just work it all the way around. Same process with the inner bearing. Now we can drop our inner bearing into that race that we just installed. We're ready to install our seal. The seal is really just here to keep all of the grease inside of the hub assembly. And uh, as long as that seal is working, you shouldn't see any grease coming out and maybe contacting the brake parts, which you definitely don't want. So pretty similar to the races, we'll just get it as centered as possible. And just with a block of wood, we'll hammer that down. And once it's seated, you should kind of hear the difference. Uh, it'll sound more solid when you're hammering it. And just double check, run your finger along the edge and make sure it's even all the way around. Now before we get our hub back onto our trailer, I like to just clean up all the old grease. Get that off of there. And once you have that, cleaned up. I'll hook up our grease gun into our Zerk fitting. Then what we want to do is just run all that old grease out of here. Just watch out because it will try to fall down on the brakes. But you'll know all the old grease is out of there because you'll see it turn color and it will become the color of the new grease. Another thing before we put this onto the trailer, just make sure you clean up any of the grease that you might have gotten on the braking surfaces while installing everything. So just spray some brake clean and get that wiped off. Now we'll simply take our, our drum and hub, slide it over the spindle, push that all the way in, and take our outer bearing, slide that in. 
that washer that we took off. We'll just line up the slot, push that over, and take our nut and start threading that on. Now we can tighten our axle nuts. What we want to do is set our torque wrench to 50 foot pounds, and then as we're rotating it, torque it down. Then we'll back it off. I like to do this just a couple times just to make sure everything is seated properly. But once you do that a couple times, just back it off. And this nut just needs to be hand tight. So get that hand tight. Then take our clip and slide that over the nut. Now we're ready to grease our spindle. Just tap into that zerk fitting and pump it up. Every few pumps, I like to just rotate everything. It's gonna help work that grease into all of our rollers. We're just gonna pump it up until we see it start to flower out of our outer bearing. And once you see it to flower out of there, you can pop your grease gun off. We'll take our cap and just get that centered and give it some light taps with the hammer. Now all that's left is to throw our wheel back on, get our lug nuts torqued down. Otherwise, that's going to do it for our look at and installation of the Timken replacement trailer bearing L44649. These will be the outer bearings of the hubs of our 2022 Forest River Geo Pro travel trailer.